Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. It's been a busy week in Watchworld and a busy week at John Wynn Mansions, let me tell you. Christopher Ward dropped their new integrated bracelet watch, the 12, yesterday, and today, Zelos dropped what is effectively the Mark IV version, I think, of one of their mainstays, the Mako. Now, I have always had a bit of a soft spot for the Mako. The version two in bronze was the first Zelos that I ever reviewed on the channel back in the middle of 2018. Now, I foolishly sold that watch, but I managed to buy one back, and I'm definitely not ever selling this one again. The Mako is a product that has evolved over the years, I guess. They've changed movements, they've changed materials, they've added colors, and now they have added something entirely new, a fourth hand. This version of the Mako is being offered either as a three-hander or as a GMT, both using Miyota 9000 series movements. Now, you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Zelos. I will, of course, therefore leave links to the landing page for the Mako in the description of the video. These go live, available for purchase in just a few hours' time. Zelos make great watches, and there's always a feeding frenzy around every single model launch. I have no doubt these will sell out in very short order, but I think they got one design element wrong with the GMT. Make sure you stick around until I discuss it. Make sure you leave me a comment letting me know whether you agree with me or not. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. Okay, let's actually begin today with a look at the range and talk about prices. Zelos do this stepped price thing. It's available for one price for a certain time and then the price goes up. That used to have some validity, but nowadays they sell out so fast the second price is pretty much immaterial. These range from 429 US dollars for the three handers in midnight blue, sky blue and hammered orange. 459 for the ever popular Aventurine, 499 for Raindrop Carbon, which I must admit I've never seen before, and a Cerakote Carbon that only comes on a Tropic. The GMT start at 529 for the Full Loom Frost Style, 549 for the Mosaic Mother of Pearl, which I think is going to be one of the most popular, and 629 for the Blue Meteorite. So about 200 US dollars then from bottom to top. Now, I must say, these are tricky watches to film. The vintage style Sapphire does give a lot of flecto, so it's hard for me to do these dials justice. I normally try and film these shots early morning here in Sydney before the sun comes over and melts everything, but these two dials just crave sunlight. Look at the difference. These really come alive in direct sunshine. The Aventurine genuinely looks like a miniature star field on your wrist. I can see why these things are so popular. And that mosaic pattern mother of pearl is like a regular mother of pearl dial multiplied by 24 because I believe there are 24 small panels stuck together to make this. I felt I needed to show you these shots early because the dials definitely have two characters depending on whether or not they are exposed to direct sunlight. Now there are a couple of differences between the three hand and the GMT other than the fourth hand of course, so let's do dimensions. The Mako is and always has been 40mm in diameter with a 20mm lug width. The bracelet tapers down to 18 and back up to 20 at the class, by the way. Lug to lug is a nice and wearable 46.8. Both watches have male end links though, but they do point down. Both watches also feature 300 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown and boxed double domed sapphire crystal. But the crystal is different on each, leading to a difference in thickness. The three hander is bang on 14mm thick, including the glass, whereas the GMT is a fairly substantial 15.8 mil thick. The crystal on that one is almost top hat and the bezel is much taller than on the three-hander, I'm guessing to accommodate the extra hand. The three-hander sized up for my seven-inch wrist weighs in 163 grams, the GMT 10 grams more than that at 173. Both watches, of course, are made of 316L stainless steel. Case finish is very nice, mostly brushed, but with a high-polished chamfer to the lugs and high-polished undercuts on both sides for extra comfort. The machine bezel on both watches are nice and grippy. 6 mil Zelos blanded crown is also nice and grippy, plus it's loomed as a bonus. I wouldn't describe it as guarded, but the mid case on the crown side does flare out above it, giving it a little bit of bash protection. It's the same case they've used on all previous Makos. This is the GMT, and you can see what I mean, just how tall it is. That bezel is really tall and the crystal. A lot of it is the crystal, but the bezel certainly adds a mill on its own. 
The bracelet is the same on both watches and it's very nice on both watches. Quick release end links, screws holding it all together, it's a three link oyster with a very smooth high polish chamfer on the outer edges. One thing that has been upgraded on the Mako over the years is the clasp. Not only does it look great with that Zelos medallion situated centrally on the upper surface, but it's also adjustable. It's a very neat spring loaded system, much better than Zelos's early efforts at an adjustable clasp. It doesn't grind or graunch like the old one did and offers a centimeter of on the fly adjustability. The case back should look pretty familiar if you've seen any previous versions of the Mako. It's a Mako Shark etched into a screw down stainless steel case back. Each watch is individually numbered by the way. It looks like they're doing somewhere between 200 or 300 of each particular variant. Both the 9015 in the three-hander and the 9075 in the GMT have 24 jewels. They hack, they hand wind, they're made in Japan, they have a roughly 40 hour power reserve and tolerances of between minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day from the factory. They only wind in one direction though, sometimes you can hear that, but you saw how thick and chunky these stainless cases are, you can't hear or feel the movements wobbling in these two. Let's have a look at the GMT movement functionality then. I did say this was a true GMT, but what does that actually mean? Well, it means when you unscrew the crown and pull it out to the first position, you adjust the hour hand in one hour increments, either backwards or forwards. There's no quick set date function, therefore you will need to roll the hour hand either backwards or forwards to adjust the date either backwards or forwards. When you pull the crown out to the second position, it hacks the movement and then you adjust the three main hands. So if you want to set a true GMT, you set the GMT hand and the date first, then you push the crown back into the first position and adjust the hour hand until it shows the current time. They call these true GMTs or travelers because if you're traveling between time zones, you can just jump the hour hand without the need ever to hack the movement, keeping the time on the watch accurate. It's also good for those awkward places like Adelaide with half hour time gaps. Seiko's NH34 as seen here in the SSK works quite differently. The crown to the first position either quick sets the date or adjusts the GMT hand backwards or forwards in one hour only increments. Pulling the crown out to the second position hacks the movement as you'd expect, but to set one of these, you set the home time first and then you go back and set the GMT hand. They call these callers because they're more useful to people who call other time zones but don't necessarily travel to other time zones. Quick look at the dials before we get these two on wrist. It's the same pattern of indices and the same hands that we've seen on all previous versions of the Mako as well. Applied arrowheads at 12, three and six pointing to the pinion, date complication with color match date wheel at the six. Circular indices applied everywhere else. There's a small chapter ring just beyond those indices. On the three hander, it has minute markings and five minute numerals. On the GMT, it has hour markings and even hour numerals. Zelos branding is kept to the minimum, just the signature Z in a circle above the pinion and the water resistance in either GMT or automatic printed beneath the pinion depending on the version. The three-hander features a brushed loom fill ceramic bezel insert fully graded. The GMT features a high polish ceramic bezel insert, again like the chapter ring with circles for the odds and Arabics for the evens. Really, it's not the layout that you're supposed to focus on here, it's the dial materials. So let's have another quick look at these two in the sunshine again. Clearly, these aren't gonna be for everyone. Not everyone wants a small star field on their wrist, but this type of dial is proving very popular at the moment with other micros trying to jump on this trend of pushing the boundaries of materials used with every single release. Zelos Loom has always been a standout and these two Makos are no different. Bicolored Loom as well on both watches, though more noticeable in the GMT because of the change of tone used in the bezel insert. You can see the two crowns glowing brightly at the four o'clock on each watch as well. When I turn the speed up, as we get towards the end of my 20 minute test, which I always say is about four to five hours of human eye equivalent, both watches are still glowing brightly. Wrist shots then, obviously the GMT is 10 grams heavier and two mils thicker, but it doesn't make a massive difference on wrist to be honest. When thickness comes from sapphire, it isn't as noticeable as when it comes from the mid case of a watch for example. It doesn't really look or feel like nearly 16 mil on your wrist, which is just as well because that's actually quite a lot. The bracelets are very comfortable and the on the fly micro adjust is great for ensuring that you get a good fit. It's easy enough to swap this one off the bracelet 
because of the quick release end links. Zelos, not quite as generous as they used to be with inclusions. You used to get tropics or leathers as part of the package, but sadly, not anymore. Pocket shots to finish, not much different really to be honest. You can't feel the 10 grams extra in the GMT and the adjustable class means that you can easily work around that by taking it in a notch and making it a little bit tighter to offset that extra bulk if you so choose. All right, moans and niggles. Well, I'm not gonna complain about the packaging. They seem to have a new tagline here, innovative watchmaking that dares. They also seem to have a new travel roll, a three watch travel roll inclusion. Very nice indeed, the nicest packaging I've seen from Zelos and probably better on balance than those big bulky wooden boxes that you used to get. But what's the first thing I always complain about in a Zelos review that nobody cares about? It's the one year warranty. There we are, I've complained about it. It's over to you not to care about it. If you actually want one of these, it is always a bit of a feeding frenzy to get one on the Zelos website, particularly some of the hot colorways like this Aventurine. If you do get one, the first thing you're gonna to have to contend with though is Flecto, Flecto, and more Flecto. It's a very vintage looking piece of double dome sapphire. I don't think there's any AR undercoating. Flecto is therefore ever present. A few layers or a few more layers would surely have served to highlight those amazing looking dials, perhaps, for the Mako version 5, we'll get more AR. And yeah, let's just return to that side profile shot again. That is a girthy looking watch, isn't it, at 15.8? Does it really need to be that thick considering it's a Miyota 9000? Perhaps they could have dropped this one down to 200 meters of water resistance and made it a little bit slimmer. And then there's the complaint I hinted at in the intro. Have a look at the GMT. You can track one time zone using the main hands, a second time zone using the numerals on the chapter ring, and a third time zone using the numerals on the bezel insert. The one thing you can't do is set the watch accurately because there are no minute markers. I cannot remember the last time I reviewed a watch with no minute markers. Certainly not this type of TIFE watch with 300 meters of water resistance and a GMT hand. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you would rather have on a watch, the ability to track a third time zone or minute markers. For me, all day long, it's not even a question. That chapter ring should have had minute markers on it and not 24 hour markers. Leaving that to one side though, or just ignoring the GMT entirely if you prefer, the Mako is such a polished offering now. The bracelet is more refined than it used to be. It has quick release and an adjustable clasp. The case finish is excellent and the dials are second to none. And of course, don't forget, if you're struggling to buy one of these in the first place, that means you won't struggle if you decide to sell it at some point later on. So there you have it. If you like the Zelos look and don't already have four or five Makos in your box already, then go for it. It's such a well-rounded watch. No surprise really considering how many of these they've sold and how many different iterations we've seen up to this point. I do like the Miyota GMT movement. I'm sure I'll see it again, but I would have liked this one more had it had minute markers. Now, normally at this point, I would direct you to watch another Zelos video, but as they're all sold out, why not watch this or this instead? Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in a future video, I hope.